Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy Friday! Whoop whoop! I know that's a little different. Usually it's Wednesday, right? But we are here, we are back, we are ready for our next project. And this one, today is Good Friday, right? And Easter is just around the corner, literally two days from now. So, this is an Easter project and it is our No Sew Easter egg. Yep. Super adorable, super cute. Lots of things you can do with this, but I'm going to show you how to make this and have a little fun doing it. So let's go ahead and get this started. I'm going to jump in up close and personal and show you exactly what you need. And then we're just going to go right into getting this adorable Easter egg done and super cute, super cute. Love it. Um, done for Easter. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in just a sec. Let's talk about some of the things that you're going to need or may want. So the first thing is a styrofoam egg. I found these on Amazon and they're five and a half inches tall or long. And then if I took a measuring tape to go along the girth or the diameter of it, it's about eight and three quarter ish right so this size egg i found to be the best to really understand what we're doing here and it came out really pretty um, they do have smaller ones but then your squares will have to be smaller maybe next year i'll play with that concept and see if i can find the right measurements but of course once you get this idea you can play with your own and try to figure out what the smaller sizes may need so we need the egg okay super cute super fun and it is actually a really nice size all right that's the first thing now to hold it for different periods of time believe it or not i've got just this uh inexpensive i don't even know where it came from uh wine glass um i don't drink out of it i use it to hold the egg uh in the, in the video for the circular or the ball of um styrofoam that I used for the Christmas decorations I was able to use a mug but the mug was too wide and it wouldn't sit so uh, and actually some wine glasses won't fit either so if you're looking for something just something that'll hold it make it a little easy so it doesn't weeble wobble right <laughs> so I did use that I am going to use a measuring tape um, and I'm using the um, side with the inches instead of the side with the centimeters and then as far um, as holding it all together this is a no sew method so I am using just regular old um, straight pins in here this I actually found and I think it came with 2000 don't quote me on that but there was a metric ton I've used them for the Christmas ornaments I've used them for the um, different projects that I may need straight pins for plenty of them in here but for this project you'll need about 200 of them just to keep all of the fabric onto the egg so I do have that now as far as fabric goes you can do this in one solid color you can do it like I did in the first one um, it has several different colors but I'm just going to use two colors now I had to turn down the light on the camera so the, these colors don't give justice for the white, these are going to be on either ends. For the bottom, they're two and a half inch squares. This fabric, and I know it's hard to tell, but it is a tone on tone. It is Soft White Butterflies by Maywood Studios. It's part of their white collection. You can find that in the shop. And for the skinny side of the egg, we are using um, two inch squares. Uh, in that white now like I said you could do the whole thing in one solid color uh, this is just a design thing whatever floats your boat or whatever you have so two inch squares two and a half inch squares for each for the top and the bottom okay after that uh, this darker color it's it's not showing justice um, I'll make sure to show a picture whenever we come to the end of the finished product but this is actually a purple and it is these are both Kona solids, okay, by Robert Kaufman. And this one is Crocus. 
it is actually a very pretty purple. And this one is the 2022 color of the year uh, in Kona, and it is Cosmos. Super cute. It's actually like um, a pinkish purple. So it's got some red tints in it, and this is more regular purple. But like I said, I'll throw a picture up and you'll see that better, but just know I have 24 of this color and 32 of this color. So when you add all of these up together, what you end up getting um, is 56. And then if, if you were doing one solid color, you'd add another 20, two and a, these are all two and a half inch squares, all three of these. So you add these four, that'll give you 60, and then you still need four of the two inch. So two inch, two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half, okay? So if you had jelly rolls or, you know, um, leftover two and a half inch strips, maybe you were doing some binding and you can cut them down into squares. Very, very um, good idea to, to use some of those scraps. You just want to make sure, and you'll see here when we start to build the egg, that there you'd want to keep some consistency in certain colors so that the points will come out. But those are the things that you're going to need. So let's go ahead and get this started. We are actually going to start on the bottom. And the bottom takes the two and a half inch squares, okay? So what I've done, I know it's hard to see, but I have actually put a pin about where I think the center is. I didn't use a measuring tape. I just kind of eyeballed it, which could get me in trouble. Y'all know that. But that's that where that pin is, is, is the bottom. Now, with every single square, every single square, I cannot say that enough. We are going to fold it in half and I'm doing wrong sides together. So the right side is facing out and you're gonna give it a finger press. Could you do an iron? Sure, why not? But there are a lot of these. So I'm just going to finger press as I go, both directions. Now you could even just fold it in half and then um, finger press along. Then we're gonna open it back up Okay, we're gonna grab our first straight pin and where the creases, I, I know you can kind of see them, so where those creases are and where they meet is, is your center. So you're gonna wanna put a pin in the center, okay? And if it's not exact, it's okay. Uh, you don't have to be too persnickety about it. It just is a good place to try. And I'm, I'm just going to move it over just a little. All right. Then for the first one, I'm going to bring over this egg. And I know it's really hard to see, but as we continue to grow, you'll be able to see better because the color will um, be helpful. But I'm going to stick, I put the pin in through the wrong side of the fabric. So the outside is this edge okay, where the pin sticks out, the wrong side, the not pretty side, is going to be where the pin head goes in and rests, okay? And then I'm gonna simply take my pin and put it where I think that center is and push it all the way down. Then I'm gonna take it halfway and fold it nice and straight and then you're gonna take one side and make a triangle, making a straight line. And then you're going to take the other side and make a triangle. Now, sometimes your pin heads, mine are a little bit big, so it doesn't make this, you know, closed straight line. It's better if it does, but it's not the end of the world. And I'm gonna take, so that was one pin. Now we're gonna use four more and we're going to put a pin at the bottom inside triangle on one side, and then we're gonna take another pin and put it in the bottom left side on the inside of that triangle. And then we're going to take another pin and we're going to put it on the outside triangle. And our last pin will go on the other side. To hold it all down. That was equal to four pins to hold everything down. 
and one to put it in. So that's five pins per triangle, okay? Then we're gonna go to the opposite side, all right? And we're gonna do the exact same thing. So first we're gonna take wrong sides together, fold it in half, give it a finger press, fold it in half again, give it another finger press, You want to try and keep it as straight as possible so your center is actually a center. Nice solid finger presses. It's really enough. We're going to open it back up with the wrong side facing us. Using those crease marks, we're going to put a pin in the center where they both meet. Okay. And pull over our egg and put it right next to the other one. Okay, wrong side facing up, pin going in, fold it in half. Now, the important thing here is we're gonna try and tr keep that line straight. And this one's actually gonna close better for whatever reason, this pin head was smaller. And again, we'll take four more pins. So we just fold it in half, one triangle, Fold it in half again. It's the same thing over and over. All of the squares are done this way. We're gonna put a pin down in the bottom inside triangle corner on the right. We're gonna put one on the left. Okay. And then we're gonna do the outsides. And the outside over here. Okay. And then we're going to turn it. So we've done right across from each other. And if you don't like something, what's nice about this is that you can pull the pin out and reposition. So I just made that line a little bit skinnier. I know it's hard to see. It'll get better, I promise. So then we're going to turn it. And now we're going to do the two sides opposite of each other. So put that over here, wrong side up. This particular fabric does have a wrong side because it's a tone on tone. The Kona solids don't, so it really doesn't matter. But I, I'm doing this in the idea that you are using something that has a wrong side and a right side. So we folded it with the wrong side in. We're going to give it a nice finger press, open it back up. Put a pin in the middle where the creases meet. We're going to come back to our egg and I'm going to put the pin. I'm tilting it so I can see, but you will see here, I hope. All right, I put a pin right where everything's meeting. And now we're going to fold it in half and do the two triangles again. Now what I like to try and do is make sure that my hole is filled pretty well next to each other. They butt as best as possible. Now notice this time I'm just doing one side at a time and you can totally do that. Just trying to make sure everything's snug. The pins won't come at me here. Probably should put a bunch in the mat and that way I can just pick them up. All right, then we fold this side in half. Okay, and we're gonna pin those down. Oop, now I've got fuzzies from the mat. All right, so there's one. Now, if they overlap like this, it's okay, okay? We're not gonna worry about that. It's all gonna be hidden. All right. Then we're gonna to go to the other side. We'll take our last center square, right side facing down, wrong side facing up. And we're gonna fold it in half two times, right? Finger pressing as we go. And like I said, you don't have to finger press. You can use an iron if you like, because the idea is that we're building these creases 
so that we can find the center more easily, okay? It's five pins, so I'm just gonna bring out five and stick them in here because it's a lot easier for me to pull them. All right, we're gonna open this back up and find that center, putting our pin in. Remember, this is the wrong side facing up. Now this one isn't quite centered, and that's okay, I could have left it. Still a little bit off, but not bad. We're gonna come back to the egg, and we're gonna put our pin together with the other so that when we fold it up, everything's matchy-matchy, up, but, butted up against each other. All right, and we'll do the exact same thing. We're gonna fold it down put a couple of pins in here do the other side Oop, and see what I'm noticing I don't know how well you'll be able to see this but my line is not straight so I'm gonna pull this out real quick and I'm gonna make it so that this line is straight And I'm going to check it by folding everything up to make sure that my line looks straight. Okay? And it does now. So now I'm going to put my pin in. Um, in the middles to hold those two corners down. And then the outsides. I'm trying to make sure you can see somewhat. Alright, so now we have the center. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my darker fabric. Okay, this is the crocus, and we're going to build on this. And I'm going to do a couple of rows with you, and then I'll finish the bottom, and I'll show you how many rows I've done once I've done it off camera and come back at you to start the top. But again, now this is solid, so there's no right or wrong side. So I'm just gonna fold everything together, give it a nice finger press, open it back up, and find my center-ish. All right, come back to the egg. Now, here's where my measuring tape comes in. What I'm doing is I'm lining up in the center point, the edge of my tape. I'm coming down to the half inch mark in the center of the line and I'm putting my pin in there so you're gonna get a nice little gap between the two points okay about a half an inch and then we'll do the exact same thing we're gonna fold it in half okay and then you're going to fold it in half again and then half again to make two triangles. Now my line, I can tell, is not straight. So I'm just gonna turn the fabric a little. And you'll notice I maybe I have a little gap right here and that's okay and that's just because of the pin head. It's a little large. I can try and pull it, but you don't wanna pull too hard because the pin head will go through the fabric. But you just wanna make sure your line is pretty straight. And we'll put the pins in the four corners, insides and out. Whoop. Now what I like to do is I like to keep going across. So you notice the first time we did two sides and then, you know, and then we did the other two. So I'm going to turn the fabric, I mean the egg. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to get my next square ready. We're going to fold it in half. We're going to fold it in half again. Give it a nice finger press. Okay, open it back up. And I'm going to put my pin right through the center. Bring my egg back over, grab my measuring tape, line up on the center of the of the points, 
go down half an inch. I know the lighting is, I try to make this as best as possible. It'll get better. Put that in there. Whoop, there we go. Right along that line. Okay, Let's see if I can do this so you can see it better. All right, I'm gonna fold it in half. All right, fold it in half again for triangle one and triangle two. And I'm making, now see this, this one closed up real nice, but I'm going to try and make sure that this line looks pretty good. And I'm going to put a pin on one side and a pin on the other. Okay. And then on this side. And again on this side. All right, so now we've got two. I'm gonna do the other two sides exactly the same way. And then I'm gonna show you the next row. And we'll do that, that last row together. Fold it in half twice. Open her back up, put a pin through it, whoop, all right, bring this back over, measuring tape, line it up in the center, go down half an inch. Now some people eyeball it, and you can eyeball it if you feel comfortable, you want to go about a half an inch. My eyeballs are not straight. Okay, then we're going to, this is why I like the glass, but I realize that it's not necessarily the best way for you guys to see what I'm doing because it's hard to hold everything at the same time. So we're going to fold it in half and then we're going to fold down the edges to make two triangles. And again, we are going to make sure that that line is straight. Now this one's gonna have a little gap because my pin head's a little big. All right. And four more pins. Two in the center corners, left and right. Two in the outside, holding those down, left and right. And you can already see how we're making this really pretty shape. <clears throat> okay. Now I'm going to go across and do the last one. So now I'm calling crocus my dark color and then the cosmos a light. So we're working on, if I ever say dark, that's what I mean. Put the pin in the center. Okay. We're going to do the last one, half an inch down. Whoop. Let me get a little closer in there maybe. And I'm going down inside of the fold where the two meet. I'm trying to get right in there in the middle. Okay, we're going to fold it down. And then fold the two corners in to make two triangles, making sure that that line is staying as straight as possible. And then we're going to put our other four pins in, two in the corner. Isn't that cool how it's forming? We've got one more layer where it's really going to show you what's happening. All right, one on this side, one on this side. All right, now we're gonna start the next layer, which is still the same color fabric, okay? That's gonna give you the pointed edges being pronounced. So we fold them in half, give it a nice finger press, open this back up. This is, this is really, the extent of this project guys it's really fun it's really easy okay so this time 
what I'm going to do, see that one doesn't look quite a half an inch, but I'm going to let it ride. I'm going to go <clears throat> to the center again. And I'm going to put my tape measure down. Now, if I went down a half an inch, it'd be equal every way around. My particular measuring tape has 10, wait, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 16. 16 hash marks in between each. So I'm going to go to the half mark. And there is this fold line where we were supposed to be button our um, two whites together. I have one that's a little over and that's okay. But I'm going to want to put my pin along in there. So I'm going to put my measuring tape on top. And I'm going to go two marks below um, the half inch. Two little ticks. Now, basically, I'm, I'm going in between a half and um, three quarter. All right. Because that's just going to give us enough. If you look, it's just below these little um, other points okay so that way it gives it some dimension and we want to fold this in half again just like we did I put the pin along this line okay inside there and I want it to keep straight that line needs to look nice and straight and then pin the insides Okay, I've pinned the insides and I'll pin the outside. I need one more pin here and I'm going to pin this side. I'm going to go straight across. Okay, I'm going to grab another one, fold it in half, fold it in half again. Grab some pins, put them over here. All right, open her back up. Put your pin into the center. Okay. Again, I will take my measuring tape, putting the tip of the zero in the center along that folded line where the two fabrics butted. And I'm going to go two ticks below the half. Now, yours might not have two ticks. Um, it just depends on how many um, lines that you have in between. But basically, what mine is equal to is in between the half inch and the three-quarter inch. The only thing that I'm trying to do is be consistent. Okay. And then we folded it in half. And then we'll take the two corners and pull those in, making sure that I get that line as straight as possible. Now, I will tell you, this is a little different going through camera because I'm trying to make sure you can see as much as possible, right? Whoop, there's two pins there. So, get them in the centers on each corner. on the outside okay We've got two more sides to do all right that's pretty by itself isn't it all right we're going to open it up Put her pin in the center. Line up along that center point. I'm going half an inch plus two ticks. We're in between a half and three quarter. Right inside of the two folded fabrics, right along that middle line. Fold it in half. Now I will tell you, because I overlap, this little piece right here is actually a little wavy. You could, I could pull those out when I was doing it and make sure they were nice and flat, but I'm just gonna keep going because at the end of the day, it's gonna be just as pretty. And 
I can tell you I did not get it straight in the center so I'm just going to pull my pin out a little bit and move it over same spot but just more towards the center of the two lines so when I fold my fabric in half I can help maintain that straight line along here and it's fun because it's a little wavy but we're getting it done right guys all right and then we'll put our whoop pins in the center maybe this one isn't sharp all right so I'm gonna throw that one out if it becomes too hard to push in it's really not a good idea to try and force it it's probably a dull needle that one actually just doesn't have a tip it's very blunt so it's not easy to push through and I'm not gonna sit here and fight with it I'm just gonna keep going because this is supposed to be easy and fun so we've got one more going all the way across put that over here for a second we've got one more and then we're gonna start the next color and I'm gonna show you how to start it This will be the longest part of the video. I do have to show you how to do the tip and how to finish, but I wanna make sure that I gave enough instruction. All right, so we're gonna put this in the center again. And again, in between two ticks below on mine, but in between a quarter and, or half and three quarter. We're going to fold it in half. Now, because I have some wave going on here a little bit, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm looking beyond that to try and see, and this pinhead's beautiful because it's nice and thin. Try to make sure we keep straight. Now, I wanna point something out. I don't have my little pointer. See how this side is? It looks a little short, okay? Um, it's probably because I, I, I need to turn this a little bit and I could fix it, but I'm not going to, okay? I'm just going to leave it. So I want you to be aware of that. If you start to see where this is a little bigger on this side, usually that means, you know, you needed to fold more in on this side than what is, and it might have to shift, okay? So I want you to be aware of that. We're going to keep going though. I'm not going to back it out. If we did back it out, I'd back it out off camera and redo it, but um, that's not gonna be helpful for you guys. <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep, but you'll notice like the rest of them, they look really good. It's just this one. So that's why we're not folded 100% correct. And I probably need to pull this needle over and I could probably do that before we moved on, but I might fix it a little. I'm gonna pull out this pin basically this and I'm gonna go over a little bit and repin it down but in the meantime I'm gonna start the next row so I'll do that off camera I'll just move it over slightly and see what, um, how much it helps okay the next one so we've done one white and two darks right we've done two layers of dark or crocus I'm now going to take the Cosmo, what I'm calling the light, and we're going to do the exact same thing with it. We're going to fold it in half and fold it in half again, putting a pin in the center. Now, when you're looking at this, and I'm hoping you can tell, yeah, you can. Okay, so this is underneath these two. So it's, it's underneath, on top, underneath, on top, underneath, on top, underneath, on top, correct? I'm going to start the new row under, with the underneath piece, okay? What was laid down first. And this time, I'm going to take my measuring tape, and I'm going to line it up on the point of that fabric. That, this point right here, where the new row is started, I'm going to put it zero on my measuring tape there, and guess what? I'm going to go down half an inch. All right, 
and we're going to do the exact same thing. And fold them together. I'm going to move this out. Fold the two ends down. Whoop, see, this is why I like that cup. <laughs> it's hard to hold, right? It's weeble wobbles. All right, I'm going to show you here. So I pulled the two ends together. And I'm going to put, again, a pin on either corner of the sides. and on the edge. And I am looking that this line is as straight as possible. So we don't get um, this craziness like over here, okay? That's what happens when your line's not straight. And then I'll go across and do the other side, right? Because that's what we do. We start with one, we go directly across, do it again, and then do these two sides. When you start the next layer, because you always do two layers of that color. So on the next one, I will line up on here and go down half an inch. We don't have to do the two ticks anymore. That was just to start the original points, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get this row off camera done, but then when I come back, I'm gonna make sure to clarify on this next row. So we've done, just for clarification, one white row, okay, one row, of the next color right on top of the white going down half an inch from the center right then we went and started a third row but it's the second of the same color we went down half an inch plus two ticks or in between half and three quarter then we started our next row with the bottom fabric of the color before we went down exactly half an inch and we'll do one layer of that. And I'll come back just for clarification when I get all that done. And I'm gonna see if I can move this one over just a little bit. So I will see you guys in just a sec. Okay, so now we're at the point where I'm on the second row of the second color. I'm gonna turn the light up for just a second. I think you can see that even more clear. Now you'll notice these pins, but we're gonna hide those every single time. So you don't have to worry about those pin showing but we've done the white then we did the crocus and now we're doing the cosmos which you do two of every color but the first one right so we're on that second row so I've done all four sides so now what I'm gonna do is I have taken I've already got my um, square ready okay just to save a little time for you but now we're working on the top layer of that first color. Okay, so we've done the bottom layer, what we laid down first. We did four of those. And now we're going to the second row of the second color. And remember when we did the, this first dark color, we actually went down a half an inch and two ticks. Well, we've set up for the rest of the layers with that first row. So now all we have to do is line up the measuring tape, okay, on that point and simply go down a half inch. It's only the first time that you have to do that. And then you're going to want to put your pin in the center. I don't know that I am centered. Uh, what do you think? Nope, I am definitely not centered. So I'm going to come out. Try to put it more down the center. Okay, and we'll do the exact same thing. And you're gonna go on one side and then the other, but I'm gonna do the two with you and then I'll finish that up and tell you how many more we have to take, how many, how many more rows of the bottom we'll do and I'll do those off camera. What I did notice um, for this um, colorway, I was supposed to start with the light color, <laughs> and I didn't. So <clears throat> my numbers were backwards. So I did put text. Uh, I will be putting text 
when I edit to make sure that if you do two colors like I'm doing, you got the right number. I was supposed to start with the light instead of the dark, so you would need more. Whatever one you start with, that's the one you're going to need more of. So I will. I have already cut eight more squares of the dark to make sure that I'm covered. So because I started with dark, you'll need 32 of those and 24 of the light. Okay, so then we got that one on there and you can start to see really how this is playing out, right? And you'll do the exact same thing on the second one. And you'll go and you'll do two across and then two across. So four on that layer. This is the same thing over and over. Now off camera, I will finish this row plus I'm going to do one more um, of the color dark which is actually two rows, right? So, off camera, hold on, I'm gonna get this in there for you. Oop, that's not centered. Oh, maybe it is. All right. So, folding it down, folding it down, making sure your line is straight. Put a pin in it. Well, maybe just one. You don't need two. Okay. Pin in the other one. Sometimes I feel like you're hitting a pin underneath. If you do that, just move the pin over a little because you can't pin through a pin. All right. So that is the next one. So off camera, I'll do the other two sides. If you'll notice, every row has four of of the rows, right? So we have one white color. There were four of those. Then we did the first row of dark. There were four of those. Second row of dark. There were four of those. Now we're on the light. The first row had four. The second row will have four more. And then we'll start the next color. So on this, I will finish this light color and I will put two more on of the dark. Okay, so it'll look like white, dark, light, dark. And I'll show you that when I'm done because then we're going to start the top, which is really hard to see with this lighting. <laughs> but it's the same process, but the measurement is a little different. But I'm going to go ahead and get this off camera and I'll see you in just a sec. All right, now we are back and my bottom is finished. So we've got the first layer of white. Then I did two layers of dark, two layers of light and two layers of dark again. That's all we need to do for the bottom, okay? So we're gonna flip this over, now we're gonna do the top. Now I have pre-done a lot, which is another tip that you can do. I went and folded a whole bunch of these different colors and put the center up pin in. I did it with the smaller one, I mean the white also. Um, but it's the same process. The only difference is, first I found the center and I just eyeballed it Hopefully we're good. <laughs> okay. The difference is these are two inch squares. Okay. And there's a reason for it. So when I was trying to figure this whole thing out, I originally started with two and a half inch. All right. What happened was <laughs> when I ended up finishing a large part of it on the top here, do y'all, I keep talking about these things like to be weeble wobbly and they like to fall down, right? Well, that's what it looked like. If you can, if you're old enough to remember Weeble Wobbles, you know, they're kind of egg shaped, but they're more of a cylinder round top that's equal. Like they don't really have a top and a bottom. That's what that looked like with two and a half inch squares. So I had to figure out how to make these lay flatter and make that point more prominent and understood. Um, another thing I thought of is, you know, I asked my husband if he knew what magic beans was. When we, when I was little, we used to travel and we'd stop at truck stops. And you could always find like those little toys in the toy section of the convenience store and they had magic beans. And that's kind of what it looked like too. So two inch squares for the top of your egg, the skinny part of your egg, you're going to want two inch squares. Now I already found the center. I went over, put a pin in it. So now we're going to begin with our two inch squares. And remember, we want the wrong side facing up. If you have one, right side facing down, we're going to fold our wrong sides together and then we're going to fold it again 
Give it a good finger press so you can find the center of your fabric. Open it back up. Put a pin in the center. Okay, bring over your egg. And we're gonna put, I'm gonna take the pin out that's the center. And I'm gonna put this in. Now, you have lines down here, okay, where the fabrics are meeting together, right? Those lines that we're always looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep that line nice and straight. It may be perfect, it may not. At the end of the day, it is not that crucial, really. It's not. And I'll show you on the one I already made, I wasn't perfect, and that's okay. Okay, so we do the same thing. We fold it in half, and then we take those corners and we fold them in and pin it down. It's the exact same process. We're just working with two inch squares instead of two and a half. Whoop, just bent that. Okay, so then you'll take your next one, go ahead and butt it up next to it. Remember, we wanna try and keep that line nice and straight. Fold it down, fold it down, making sure your lines are good. Put a pin in the centers, one on each corner. Put a pin on the edge. And we're gonna do it again four times, right? Because each row has four colors. I mean, four squares. All right. Trying to keep that line. I'm actually looking at this line down here, seeing how straight I am. Put your pins in. And y'all already know the next step. We're gonna start the next color after I get these four on. Right? Mm, that line is not straight. We're going to let it ride. Okay, last one. Okay, fold it in half. Pull in the corners. Now, you will get some overlapping whether you like it or not. You can get these pretty darn straight in the center if you're looking for that but this is a small point i mean i guess you could go smaller than two inches but folding it in half like that just these squares really get tiny <laughs> all right there we go now y'all know the next step i am going to start with the color the dark okay I'm going to take my um, measuring tape. I'm going to line it up right in the center. And I'm going to put it a half inch down, right in the middle of that line. And we're just going to do the same thing over and over. Fold it in half, fold it in half, and fold it in half again. Take your pins, and I'm looking to make sure my line's pretty straight. All right. Oh, I got some out, and then I keep forgetting about them. And we'll go on the opposite side. Get another one. Now, remember, I've already prepped them. It does make it go a lot faster when you have everything prepped. I'm lining up this, the zero mark on my measuring tape with the point in the center. I'm going down a half inch. Trying to keep it in the center of the line. And we're just gonna simply fold it down in half and then fold the two corners down and pin. Now I will tell you to start the center, it's really helpful to have that glass. But when I'm working on this, and I don't have a camera to contend with to make sure you guys can see something. 
I actually put this on my lap. I found it to be really easy to do that. All right, then we do another one. Center mark in the middle of your egg, half inch down, fold it in half, take your corner, fold it in half, take your other corner, fold it down, making a nice straight line. Take your pins, one on the end, whoops, now see that doesn't look straight, right? It looked like I went a little off. All right, that's pretty close. Put a pin in them, put another pin in, and then on the outside, and again on the outside. Then we'll go across one last time for the first row of the dark color. This one's a little different because it's got a pretty big opening because my pin head was wide. I'm gonna do my best to keep this nice and straight. Fold it in half. Fold it down on one side, fold it down on the other side. Now see, I'm looking at this line. I think we're good. We'll find out as we keep going. And like I said, if you figure out you need to move it, you can always unpin it and shift it as necessary. Two pins on the inside. Two pins on the out, well, one on each side of the outside. Now we've got our first layer done. And again, just like the, the next one, we are going to line up in the center, okay? And for this, this next row, we are going to go down a half an inch and then two ticks or in between a half and three quarter, however you're, tape measure works or maybe even your eyeballs right <clears throat> fold it down fold it down now see in my opinion I'm gonna uh, it probably could go a little bit to the whoop I just can't pull it out that's one thing you got to contend with it will go through if you pull too hard so I'm going to try this again. I'm going to actually move it slightly to the right and I can still see the pinhole so I don't have to remeasure because it was down far enough. I just feel like it wasn't over far enough. All right, we'll see how this one works. I think that looks a lot better. No. Two on the corners on the inside. Two on the points on the outside. You'll come across. Remember, we want to go on this second row of that dark, okay, or the third row, depending on how you want to look at it, right? We're going to go down half an inch and two ticks and we won't have to do that again just like on the other side because we're setting up for the rest of the egg okay and I like it so we need four pins total one Two. Go to the outside. Three. Four. Okay. So we went across. And are you seeing what I'm seeing? It's starting to look a lot like an egg. The only thing I'm questioning, this one looks a little deeper 
than the other side. So I'm going to go back and measure. And it is, in fact, two down and a breath. I mean two down. Half an inch and two ticks. And that one is half an inch and two ticks. So believe it or not. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. It, it actually is pretty darn close. So I'm going to let it ride. Anytime you see that, you can always go back and remeasure. One of the things I've been figuring out is that my, you know, your, your pin may take up a little room. So it's okay if you go down just a smidge where you want it. The idea is that you just try and stay consistent. Whatever it is that you choose to do, as long as it's least a half an inch and then the one, the second row dips because that's what gives you that star look and it gives you a chevron-y look, okay? I am going to turn up the light here in a little bit so you, it's just that white blinds you out, doesn't it? All right, and you know, after we got these four done which we only have one more, look how fast this is going now, does really help um, if you have them all pre-made. Now, this one's going to be interesting because this one overlapped a lot. So let's see what happens. I can push the fabric down if I so need to. Nope, we're okay. We're going to let it ride. I just think, though, that I'm a little off-center. So I'm actually going to move it over. Oh, and let's see. Did I go down far enough? Half an inch plus two ticks. Yep. Okay, so I'm just going to move it to the right. All right. That's much better. Try to keep that line nice and straight. We've got one pin in the middle, two pins on the other corner in the middle, two for the one on each side, so two more. So a total of five pins for each two and a half inch block because all the rest of them are two and a half inches. The only one that's two is that point. Let me turn the light up for a second. Okay, so we're getting there, right? We've done that first row of white and the first row I'm choosing dark fabric to start. And you're gonna do the same thing just like we did on the other side. So the first, you're gonna start with the one that's on underneath, okay? It's on the bottom layer. You're gonna line up your zero on the point, grab your next color, go a half an inch. Stick them in there. Let's see if I can get this nice and straight. Fold her down. Fold her down. We need four pins. One. Oh, here's one over here. Two, three, and four. Looking good, looking good. So we go across, line up on the point of that fabric, go down half an inch. Fold it down, fold it down, and stick in your pins. So you do four on this layer, four total squares, and then you go to the next layer. 
and then I'll tell you how many to do all together okay and then we'll finish it up so now I'm going on the bottom layer line up my measuring tape grab my next square it's a half an inch Hope I got that centered. There's one. Uh, homemade is happiness. Let's just keep going. I could probably move it over just to smids, but we're just going to keep going. It's my egg. And it'll be your egg. You make your own decision. Right? Okay, get all this in, go directly across, line up your measuring on the zero of that point of that purple fabric, half an inch down, trying to keep it nice and straight. Okay, fold it down. Take each corner, this is it guys, when we start the second row it's the same on the from the other side, everything's the same. Alright, so now we're starting on the next row of the lighter purple so we're working with the top layer of the dark purple we're going to lay it down and because we've already set up where this point needs to go consistently throughout the rest we can simply now go down half an inch we don't have to worry about the two ticks anymore okay now when you do this what i really like is when you fold this in half you can actually see if you're just dipping below and we are so now we just need to make sure that we're lining it up nice and straight okay put a pin in it so it'll stay and you're gonna finish the light color or this row and then you'll start on the next row and I'm going to use I'm going to go back to this dark you're going to do a total of four rows of colors okay so of course we had the white I'm not counting that so I'm we did the dark together then we during a light we started the light together I'm going to do another dark and another light so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about when we're looking at this egg okay that center green is where the white is here, okay? And then we have a yellow, a pink, a red, and a yellow. So that's one, two, three, four rows of color, but know that each color has two rows. So you have two rows of yellow, then two rows of pink, then two rows of red, then two rows of, oh, yep, and then two rows of the yellow here. So I'm going to do the same thing with my purple. So I have the white. I'm doing the dark purple, the light purple. Then I'll do a dark purple and a light purple. When I get done with mine off camera, I will then definitely show you the next step. So I'll see you in just a sec. I have her all finished. Everything is good to go. I did the dark, the light, the dark, and the light. Okay, so I did four rows total of color, which are actually equal to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows, right? Because each row of color is actually two rows. So she's all finished. Now we just got to cover this, you know, line of fabric and the pins that are out. You can do a piece of ribbon now I don't have any ribbon that is wide enough this is 3 8 
And if you look, if I cover, you know, this end here, it won't be wide enough to cover some of these pins, okay? So you'll need something a little wider, and you can. You can just simply wrap it around and pin it, or you can hot glue and get that finished in that way. And that would be super cute, okay? A little bit wider ribbon, that would be absolutely darling. Now I want to show you, on this one, I actually did two things. I have a piece of fabric, because this ribbon right here was see-through. And if I just put the ribbon on top, you would still see the pins and the line, because it is a see-through, and it's pink, just so you know. Um, ribbon on top just for more decorative purposes but I did this at my mother's house and this is her ribbon that she gave to me I don't have this ribbon so I'm not going to put any um, ribbon down here I'm going to show you how I did the fabric um, in just a second but I want to tell you I also used pins I don't know how well you can see them but they are pinned in place. I did not hot glue because I'm not allowed to use a hot glue gun. If you can hot glue, you can do whatever you want. But I am going to use these pins right here that are decorative. I used them during the Christmas, uh, one of the Christmas wreaths that we made. I have various different colors. I found them on Amazon, guys. I do not carry these in my shop. They're just... Um, little pretty and I have different colors purple green all kinds of different colors black I'm going to use white and you'll see why in a second but it is an option and of course we're going to talk about the top to get the string or the uh, ribbon to hang it and a little bow okay and if you'll notice I did use a you know one of these pins to put that in place too which you could you could glue it right and you could put any kind of decorative thing up here to add a little flair. I mean, this is your egg. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to use this for the hanging purposes and the bow. Okay, this is something I have um, available to me. And it's all about finding what you have in your own. If you don't have it, it's not very expensive to buy ribbon. But you can definitely buy some thin ribbon to put the hanger together and the bow on top and then a thicker ribbon to go on the bottom and again you can hot glue it. you can even hot glue the fabric I'm gonna do okay so the first thing <laughs> that we're gonna do is once you have all your fabric on there you really need to measure with the fabric on here how much all the way around so when I take my measuring tape and I go all the way around I'm looking at nine and three quarters, okay, which is bigger than the egg, and that's because of all the fabric that's on top. So, to make things simple for myself, I did cut an 11 inches piece of fabric by two and a half inch wide, okay, so just one strip, 11 inches long, two and a half inch wide. Now, <clears throat> this one's a little shorter, but I wanted to show you what I did, okay? So this is a two and a half by, I don't even know what this one is. Might be nine and three quarters. It's not going to work for the, um, for the egg because it's not long enough. And I didn't want this dark color. You could do whatever you want, but I didn't want it. I wanted white to accent the top and the bottom, so I cut the white. But the first thing I did is I took my strip and I folded the ends in to be uh, half an inch on one side and half an inch on the second side, okay? So once I pressed those down half an inch, then I just simply took my fabric and I matched them together and I pressed that together to give me, this is like a three quarter inch strip of fabric. Now, I don't want things to unravel and I don't want things to get crazy. So I'm gonna show you here in just a second. I actually took this end, folded it down about a quarter of an inch and then 
folded it back up. Okay. And once I got that together, I, this is the only sewing I did guys. And this is because you can use glue. You don't have to sew. Um, you can also, um, yeah, you can use glue. Uh, just so the reason I did this is so that this end will not unravel because we all know that fabric likes to unravel. So I did on this one, do a little stitch, a quarter of an inch in, just enough to hold that together and that way nothing unravels, okay? And when you load it into your sewing machine, you wanna load the fold first because if you do it this way, it could, it could flip the back end and cause a huge mess ask me how I know so if you do this and you're actually going to use your sewing machine to tack down you'll want to feed it where the fold is first okay and I just simply did a quarter inch just a seam line and I actually used Dove it would have been better to use uh, a white this is pretty striking on the camera and so I'm not sure how well you're seeing um, my stitch line but it would have been better in white I'm okay with it because I was trying to make sure that you could see different things okay so that's how I put this strip together and like I said I ended up cutting 11 inches all right so now I'm gonna pull my egg in and you can very well if you want to glue it down with a hot glue gun or whatever kind of glue to keep it straight okay but I'm going to put it here and I want to cover this line and any pins that show. <clears throat> and I'm going to go, actually, I'm just going to anchor it. I'm going to end up pulling this pin out. So I'm just going to anchor a little bit. Well, you know what? We can even go one step better. I'm going to take my straight pins because remember I'm not hot gluing I'm not allowed to use a hot glue gun all right so I make quite a mess guys it even goes in my hair it's it's horrible so I'm gonna just anchor them down okay and I'm gonna go all the way across and I'm just gonna make sure I'm trying to stay as straight as possible and I'm covering any lines that may happen this is my sewn line now this is I'm gonna make this my quote unquote back so nobody has to see that and I'm going to put some pins in here for decorative purposes and I think because I'm not putting a ribbon on top all right I think what I'm gonna do, now this is my back. I'm gonna leave it as my back, it's gonna be okay. If I wanna you know, move this fabric so it covers a little better, I can do all that. Um, but just for you guys, I'm just gonna take my pins and I'm going in at the points where the lines are. And I'm just going to anchor it down and I chose the white because my fabric is white. If I had green fabric, I would use green pins. If I had blue fabric, I personally would use blue pins. It's all up to you. All right, but I'm just going to anchor them in. Okay. There's no so now Remember when I told you to pay attention to lines? I don't know if you can see it as well as I can, but this one is not lined up with this one. It's okay. We're not gonna even bother with it. Now I could actually go back in and meet here at the points. Hmm. 
and just keep going any decorative idea that you want now I'm not going to do this on camera the idea that I'm trying to show you is you don't have to have a hot glue gun you don't have to have ribbon if you have fabric you can definitely use that okay but you're going to want to do some kind of decorative idea so that's the <laughs> that's the least I can do but the idea is that you get it anchored down in some form or fashion it doesn't matter what design you decide to do but you're just going to want to use your decorative pins and um, make sure that you anchor down your ribbon okay or that you're anchoring down your not just ribbon but maybe it is a piece of fabric like I'm doing okay you don't even have to do as much along here you could definitely like this one all I did was anchor it down with four little beads there's one here one here one here and one here and then the rest of it's open and so guess what this is my front so when I hang it on my um, stand or my tree or whatever this is what you're gonna see but that is the back with all the little pins so you can do whatever you want it's totally up to you this is your creativity on what you want to happen You know, I personally am just going to move this. Okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. Now we're going to talk about the hanging part. And I'm going to make this my back because this is where it overlaps. And you could cut it to be shorter because it's overlapping all the way over to here. I'm just going to leave mine. It's, it's really okay, guys. It really is. So this is my back. This is just super cute. Gotta love it. But I'll finish this off off camera. Actually, I, I'm, I'm good with this. All right. So now let's talk about the hanging part. And I have these pins out here still because I'm going to use one to get it done. All right. So. I'm just going to, I don't even know what the measurements are. I'm just going to pick this up. And if it's too long, I can always cut it shorter. But I'm going to do about the same. And just cut, okay? Just a little, just a little here. I'm going to line that up in the middle. I'm going to take one of these dress pins and I'm going to put it right in the center of what I think is the center because I can't really see it. So that's going to be what's going to be the hanging part. And then I'm going to take this ribbon here and I want to make a bow. Okay. And I'm just going to cut. Okay. Now we could just tie a bow just like this, but I, I try to make things as easy as possible. Uh, maybe I'll do it. You're watching real, real life, real time here. Let's see if I can do this on camera. I don't know if I can. Nope. All right, so what I'm going to do, because I have to think about it. I don't have time to think. You don't have time for me to think. So I'm just going to tie a little bow. Here, so I'm a little more centered in the camera for you. All right. I'll probably have to make this pretty off camera, but I just want to give you an idea. I'm trying to make the two ends 
a little bit equal. Okay. Now I prefer the other method, but I'm going to put this down here. Take one of my decorative pins. I've got white ribbon, so I want a white pin. I'm just going to stick it in here and snip. Figure out which side is the front. This is my back, so I want to turn all of this. Yep, I want to turn all of it. <laughs> That's my back. Okay, so I'm going to pull this off for just a second. I want to turn this around. Because this is my back. Then I'm going to take my little bow that I just made. Put it right on top. Put this on here. And that is my finished product. Super cute, super love it. Let me turn the light up for just a sec. I turned it up just a bit. That's my back. It's got my overlap here and I have some pins going on here that are a little extra. But how darling is this? Absolutely super cute. Let me come back at you. That's how I'm finishing it. Like I said, you can hot glue that is perfectly fine and you don't have to have all these pins in different places but you can definitely do that but that is the egg guys super cute gotta love this oh my gosh I just love it so I'll see you guys in just a sec okay I just want to share this with you so here's the one that I've done before that y'all can you know totally see and this is with a hanging I went to have head and took off the hanging piece from this egg and you could put these in baskets you could all kinds of decorative purposes you don't have to have a hanger um, but this too with the hanger I'm just gonna add the hanging part to it put it right down the middle and put a little bow with it isn't she cute I just love these guys I absolutely love them you can do all kinds of colorways you can um, you can do it scrappy you just want to make sure that your colors or you know your contrast are the same on each row so it really gives that up and down look uh, across it so that you have those angles but other than that guys this is super duper cute and you can add more decorative pins down here you could have done a different color there are so many things that you can do to enhance and embellish your egg but this is exactly how we do this so I will be on today with my eggs <laughs> um for our live quilting and answer session so if you have any questions about this process i will be on facebook today next week we're going to do both platforms and we think we I, I apologize but i think we have figured out all the sound so um we should be good to go and so i'll be there today 3 p.m eastern time because i'm here in virginia for any live quilting and answers or live Q&A that you may have regarding making these eggs. If you make some, please, please, please do share because it would be a lot of fun. Now these were the five and a half by eight and a half um, ish eggs. Uh, hopefully next year I will have worked a little bit and I can do something a little smaller. Just know that your squares are gonna be smaller and it gets a little finicky, right? But I'm gonna work that out and see what I can figure out. But this is this Easter's project. Super cute. I mean, what's your vote, guys? Which one do you like the best? <laughs> Love to hear from you. 
So I'll see you today at 3 p.m. If you like this video, don't forget to like and share it with somebody else because they may actually enjoy making their own Easter eggs made out of fabric without sewing. The only sewing I did was that little stitch and you didn't have to, you could have glued it. Um, but yeah, it's a no sew egg guys. And it's so super cute. The Easter Bunny is dropping us some lovely eggs this year. So, all the supplies minus the pins are in our shop. You can definitely pick up some purple fabric of Kona, both in um, Crocus and Cosmos. And uh, we got a pink in. A pink egg would be really cute. We'll see if I can get one done by... 3 p.m. later today. That would be a lot of fun to look at. But that's it for today. So until next time, guys, until next week on Wednesday, a video will drop on Wednesday with a whole new project. So until then, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing, and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy Friday. Happy quilting. I'll see you all soon.